Hello and welcome to this maths training video. In this video we're going to continue considering the subject of fractions. Now we've spoken about various facets of this fascinating subject in previous videos so if you haven't watched those already then please go and get caught up with them as they'll really help to build your understanding towards what we're working to. In this video we're going to look at switching between mixed and improper fractions. So in the previous video we looked at the definition of those and what they were. In this one we'll have a look at how we can mathematically switch between the two. So let's just have a very quick recap before we throw ourselves into uh, switching between these. So you may remember from our previous video that we defined what uh, these numbers were. So on the left here we've got what's referred to as a mixed fraction. So we've got a whole number and then a fraction making it mixed. And then over here we've got an improper fraction. Now it's called improper because with fractions we normally have a larger number on the bottom and a smaller number at the top. But here as you can see we've actually got a large number at the top making this fraction improper. Now again you'll remember that the interesting thing about these two numbers is that they are both equal. So both of these numbers represent the same amount just expressed in slightly different ways. And you'll remember that we discussed how you can consider this in terms of pizza. So down the bottom of the screen here you can see there we've got one whole pizza represented by this one. And then if we look at a pizza that's been uh, taken part of it away, it's had three parts taken away, leaving us with just one quarter here. You can see that uh, this uh, kind of image at the bottom here represents what we've got on the left. One whole one and one quarter shaded there. But if you then count up the number of quarters that there are here, one, two, three, four, five shaded quarters, you can see we've got an improper fraction as you can see here. We've got five fourths, five quarters, which again is represented by this symbol down the bottom. Now if that's been a little bit too quick then go back and watch the previous video where I discussed this in a little bit more length. Again just another quick example that we looked at in the previous video was this one here. So we've got two and three quarters. That is our mixed fraction and if we want to consider what that would be as an improper fraction how do we get there? We think in pizza. So we've got two whole ones as you can see there and then our third part of this you can see is made up of three shaded quarters, so one quarter has been removed. So we've got one, two, three quarters. And now if we count those up, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven quarters. And so the improper fraction looks like this. Now this is all well and good. Uh, this is great for uh, sort of the basics and as an introduction it helps us to understand the relationships between mixed fractions and improper fractions. However, it gets a little bit trickier when the numbers start to get bigger because we can't go drawing circles of pizza every time we want to do one of these slightly more complicated calculations. So let's have a look at how we can do this in a way that doesn't require us to draw loads of circles. Now this isn't too difficult once you kind of understand what's going on here. So hopefully we've got a vague idea of what we're doing because of the pizza analogy. But what that actually allows us to do is think, right, whatever quantity we've got here as an improper fraction, it's going to be split up into fifths. So that's what we're going to be working with. So before we do anything, we can think, right, we're going to have fifths on the bottom. So you can see there that this number has just been transmitted over to here. Okay, so we're thinking in fifths. And then we know we've got three whole ones and each one of those whole ones is made up of uh, five fifths. So we're trying to figure out how many fifths we've got. So there's a good start. We've got three times by five and that is going to give us 15. So to start with we know we've got at least 15 fifths because those 15 fifths make up the three whole ones. Yeah, so we've got three whole ones multiplied by five because it's been divided into fifths. So you can see that what we're doing here is we're actually multiplying these two numbers together, three times five. And then all we've got to do is take that 15 that we just calculated and all we've got to do is just add on to that the number that is at the top of our mixed fraction. So we've got 15 plus two, so we're just adding this number on here. So in this case we're then just adding 2 and 15 plus 2 gives us 17. So that number there is the total number of fifths that we've got in this mixed fraction. So if we then put that number at the top here you can see we've got 17 fifths and that really is all there is to it. You just multiply the whole number 
by the bottom part of the fraction. And then all you've got to do is add on the top number to that calculation. So in this case, it's three times five gives us 15, and then 15 plus two gives us 17, and we end up with 17 fifths. So you can see that actually converting between a mixed fraction and an improper fraction is really quite simple. Now again, what I'm gonna do in the series following this video is I'm going to do another video where I just do a whole heap of examples of how to do this just so you can kind of get into the rhythm of it and see how it works for more than just one example. Uh, however if you're kind of comfortable with this, if this makes sense and you're happy to move on then feel free to skip the next video and move into the next one in the series because that's going to uh, just kind of help you progress at the rate that you need to progress at. So if you're feeling a little bit unsure of this, you want to see a few more examples then please watch the following video in this series but if you're happy with this then please skip on to the next one. However, before you do that, let's just have a quick look at how we go in the opposite direction. Okay, so just a quick recap from the previous video again. Uh, we used this improper fraction as an example of how to go in the opposite direction. So from an improper fraction to a mixed fraction, the question is how do we get there? And again, we use the analogy of pizza. So if you look at this one, you can think, right, well, how many pizzas have I got here? I've got one whole one, and then I've got another two thirds. And if you count up the number of thirds that we've got here, we've got one, two, three, four, five thirds. So there's our improper fraction, five over three. But then if we look at this as a mixed fraction, we just ask ourselves, well, how many whole ones have we got? We've got one whole one, and then we've got two thirds left over. So that's one and two thirds, as you can see there. So that's how we go in that direction. But again, we want to get away from perhaps drawing lots of little circles and figure out a way that we can do this a little bit more effectively. So we're going to have a look at this now uh, with a slightly more complex uh, calculation. So we're going to look at this one, 19 over 4. And the question is, what will that be as a mixed fraction? So we want to go in the other direction now. Now this is Again, really simple. If we just remember in the very first video that I did in this series, you'll remember that I said that a fraction is basically just a division. So this line here just represents the divide function. And in fact, you could you could almost put the little dots in here and you'd, you'd see there you've got a divide symbol. So we're going to use that fact to our advantage here and we're just going to follow the direction that we're given. 19 divided by 4. So what's 19 divided by 4? Well, let's count it up. We've got uh, if we sort of do it in multiples of four, we go four, then we've got eight, and then we've got 12, and then we've got 16. Now, if I add another four on here, it gets me to 20, which has gone above that. So how many lots of four have we got here? Well, we've got uh, one there, uh, two there, three there, and four there. So we've got uh, four altogether. 19 divided by four is four with a few numbers left over. So how far do we have to count to get from 16 to 19? Well, we have to go 17, 18, 19. So that means we've got one, two, three left over. And that number three is the one that goes at the top of our mixed fraction divided by four, which is this four here. Okay, so that's that four there. So you can see there that our improper fraction, which was 19 over four, 19 quarters, expressed as a mixed fraction is four and three quarters, four and three over four. So that's how we get from this side, the improper fraction to this side, the mixed fraction. We simply do the division, whatever the whole number is that we come out with goes there as the whole number in the mixed fraction. And then whatever the remainder is, in this case three, that goes at the top of the fraction and whatever number was here goes at the bottom of the fraction. Now again, if you're super comfortable with this and you're happy with how that's working and you feel like you could do that uh, yourself without any intervention, then please feel free to skip the next video. But in the next video, we're going to do a whole heap of examples on this, how to go from improper fractions to mixed fractions, and we'll demonstrate how that's done. So hopefully this video has shed a bit of light on how to transfer between mixed fractions and improper fractions and back in the other direction as well. As I say, if you've not at all confident about this, if you're not sure about this, then please watch the following video. The more examples you do, the more certain you'll become and the more it will make sense and it'll become like second nature to you. But if you're really comfortable with this, then feel free to skip the next one and move on to the video where we start looking at multiplying fractions together, which is quite an interesting subject as well. So all that remains in this video is to say thank you very much for watching.